Hi guys, it's Carrie with Rock and G Farm. Well, today on the farm, I am moving my chicks that hatched probably in March out into the garden area in a little chicken tractor and getting them acclimated to being out of the brooder. And then when they get a little bit larger, we will move them over to the chicken coop with the rest of the chickens. So if you are new here on my channel, please hit that subscribe button. It is for free. And then right next to it, hit that notification bell. And as soon as I upload new videos, you'll be notified that I have a new video uploaded. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Give us some good comments below. And just let us know in the comments what you would be interested in as far as homesteading, um, urban gardening, vertical gardening, ch raising chickens, raising beef. Just anything that you have a question or are interested in, let us know below. And guys, here we go. We're going to get those chickens moved before it gets too late today.
Okay, so we have some Rhode Island Reds, Light Brahmas, and Easter Eggers that are um, Americana and Rhode Island Red mix. <laughs> so that's what we've got right here. Um, I'm going to try to keep most of these because I'm trying to replace some of my Rhode Island Reds. This batch, I hatched more Rhode Island Reds in this batch. The other two batches, I hatched more Light Brahmas. I had um, the same, I didn't like count the eggs, I just whatever eggs I got that day, if there were Lot Brahmas, Rhode Island Reds, I put them all in, and then um, that's just kind of what I got. I'm, I don't understand why the last two batches had more American, or Light Brahmas, more and less Rhode Island Reds, I don't know. So anyway, we're gonna let them get acclimated out here, and each day I'm just gonna kind of move them closer to the chicken coop and let them get acclimated in here, let them grow a little bit, and then we will move them into the big pen with the big chickens and probably leave them in here a little bit just so that they can get used to them they'll probably stay in this pen for a little bit um and we'll just move it daily but this is what we're gonna do um so yeah i'm gonna go get their food and get them set up and i'll go get some um shavings and put some shavings in here just for tonight so they'll feel a little bit better but let's see, I don't know how many I've got. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Looks like I've got 13 in this batch. Okay guys, so that's a very short video for today. Um, I hope you enjoy it. If y'all want to learn more about raising chickens, you just let me know. Um, you can ask questions about MPIP certification on your um, extensions office page. Just um, Google MPIP. It's the um, National Poultry Improvement Plan. And it's just to help to make sure that we do not pass on diseases like the avian flu and diseases back and forth to other farms like right here I have people all the time asking me well do you I have a extra chicken or I have some more chicken do you want them no absolutely not all of my chickens the first Rhode Island Reds that I got were from the tractor supply and then I bought some chocolate Orpingtons from a man here in town that is NPIP certified and then everything else has been hatched on the farm so I don't bring any other chickens onto the farm and I don't let people who have chickens like get in my coops because they could have diseases on their shoes so there's a lot that you can do for certification to make sure that your farm is MPIP certified and to improve your flock. Um, somebody, I can't remember. I think they said, oh, oh, oh. My husband asked me about chicken litter because uh, one of our friends has some and they were like, we have chicken litter, um, do you need any kind of fertilizer or anything? And I'm like, I'm not bringing anything other chicken on my farm other than what I have bred or what I have hatched from eggs that I went and purchased. So that's one way to keep your farm clean of diseases. But also you can do the MPIP certification. They just come out and test your birds, look at your setup, test your setup to make sure there's no um, bacteria or any kind of uh, viruses or any diseases that could be harmful and passed on from other chickens to from chicken to chicken to chicken and from farm to farm to farm however with that being said if they find something you have to completely kill your whole flock and you 
probably will have to like do a massive clean of your supplies, housings, and everything. So you, that's why you just want to be very careful when you have chickens, not to get chickens just from anybody. Make sure that they um, know about biosecurity um, for your chickens and your farm. And they are enjoying being on the ground. Okay. But guys, thanks for joining me today for this very, very short video. Let me get their feed started. I'm going to um, leave this open a little bit and then the evening I'll tuck it all in so that they can feel safe and they are safe here in this fencing because it is the new fencing that my husband has put around my garden and the chicken coop so the big chickens can't fly into the garden area and hopefully no predators can get in. Now, not saying that somebody can't at some point dig underneath the fence, but as far as right now, we've not had any problems with that. So they're really secure in this area right here. So thanks guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like our videos and thanks for joining me today and make what you have beautiful.